Hello, this is Roberto Lorenzo Ferguson with my man, Mr. Daniel Baldwin. And uh, today we're going to talk about reversing type 2 diabetes. We're going to talk about it. And then we're going to also talk about real weight loss and all of that being powered by a methodology called Diet Free Life. And in my opinion, Daniel, which I'm very thankful that you're willing to open, openly talk about this, and we'll definitely talk about your documentary coming out. But the goal here is to talk about your experience with Diet Free Life and your, with your diabetes and how we met, and then kind of take people through that journey, and then talk about real sustainable weight loss and get people off the trend and the fads of going from one yo-yo diet to the next yo-yo diet. So that would be the goal. And then people will be asking questions and I'll moderate uh, as the questions come in and you and I will both tackle those questions unless they're specific, specific to you, you or to me. What do you think of that? Open? It was long winded. It, <laughs> it, infor- it was informative. All right, so, let, so let's go back there. You. Set it up and just share with people because a lot of people have no idea um, like where you were at a, at a certain part in your life when the diabetes was a certain place. And I love when you shared a story about being on the plane and, and all that. So uh, kind of give us some of that background that I'm alluding well, to. Now, I just got told to, you know, to volley with this. And now you, you put me in like a 10 minute story. Well, I mean, it can go back and forth because I may have some questions in between. Right, good, give, good. You know, give a brother a chance to ask a question every once in a while. <laughs> Give a brother off, yo! Come on. Um, all right. Well, there was a lot. There was a lot in there, but let me let me let me say this first. All right. Listen carefully to the words "diet free life." It is called diet free life because it's really not. Well, it's hard to say because it sounds like an oxymoron. It's not a diet. So before you. I had only known of one real diet that you could go on or change, I'll call it, um, that was effective. And it was given to me by Al Bevilacqua, who was the Olympic wrestling coach in 1980, very famous uh, um, wrestling coach around the world. And Bev said, and, and Al Bev talks like this, and a little like De Niro at the end, he breathes at the end of the sentence. He says, hey, big Ben. You know how to do a push-up? And I looked at him and I went, yeah, Bev, of course I know. He goes, you know how to do a sit-up? All right, listen. I want you to take the normal amount of food you eat. If you eat a thing of haagen ice cream this big every day, it's okay. Don't change it. I want you to take a 10-ounce glass of water and drink it down before you take a single bite in the morning, during your lunch, and at your dinner. Before you eat anything, knock down a 10-ounce glass of water. Then I want you to take a knife and I want you to take the baked potato with chives, butter, everything you have, and I want you to cut it in half. And then I want you to cut one of the halves in half. So take 25% and knock it off the plate. And take 25% of the steak and knock it off the plate. And take 25% of the ice cream, whatever you eat, for 30 days. Drink that glass of water, bowl of cornflakes, then spoon out a quarter of it. He said, you've now knocked down the amount of calories you bring in your body without doing a single bit more of exercise by 25%. And 30 days later, I want you to take half of everything you eat on your plate. And I want you to take it away and drink a second glass of water after your meal. And I lost weight forever using that diet. But it didn't really modify what I ate. And I still ate a lot of bad things. So, and that was cutting weight as a a wrestler. I did that diet. In your model, which I found really amazing, was it has to do with obviously portion, but you can eat just about everything. You just have to eat it in the right combinations. And I looked at that and I thought, is that possible really? You know, that if I eat protein, carbs, fast carbs, low carb, you know, and I'm not going to go into the whole methodology of the diet, but um, I had made a decision that my friend had overdosed and died. His name was PJ. Raynor and you knew him very well too. Um, I promised him that I would take him to run with the bulls in Pamplona, Spain. If he got two years sober, he got three and a half years sober and I hadn't had a chance to take him yet. And he decided unwisely to go back out and use heroin one more time. It was laced with fentanyl and on the first shot he overdosed and died. 
So I struggled with it greatly that I lost my friend that I had spent so much time mentoring and love his, love his mother. I mean, it, Barbara Jean and her sister, Rosie, you know, I know both their husbands, good guys really well. I'd have married either one of them. I mean, they're just, uh, just that kind of family, you know, salt of the earth, love them. Um, I couldn't, I, could, I wasn't handling it well. Um, even when I talk about him now, I get a, <clears throat> it's, it's hard for me. I loved him. And um, I wanted to ex yeah, yeah, he was a good one. He was a good guy. So I wanted to exercise the demons and I wanted to keep my promise. I was 285 pounds and I had five months. And so I reached out to my friend, Robert Ferguson, who had trained names like Vargas and you know, like world champion at the highest level there was. And I said, I'd really like to wrap my head around this, um, this diet and will you help me? Um, now remember too, to answer all your questions, um, I went in for my physical and my doctor said, I have to weigh you, I have to do this, I have to do blood work. I got on the scale and she walked in and she said, do you know how much you weigh right now? <clears throat> And it's one of those, you walk on the scale and you stand the things over here when there's nurses standing there. So I didn't see it. She said, you weigh 285 pounds, Daniel. You were 250 pounds at the physical last year. You put on 35 pounds in one year. She said, you know, I'm really worried about how heavy you are right now. So now I'm a type two diabetic. When I first found out I was a diabetic, that's annoying. Good job, Mia. <laughs> Why is that coming through my computer? Um, so when I first found out that I was technology of today, Daniel, it's like they connect with the phones and the computers, and one goes off, and yeah. But I got a. I, got, I still have the horn that I put in my ear to go. Huh? What'd you say there, Shuddy? Mm -hmm. I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, <clears throat> I got the blood work done. Let me go into that. And um, she called me back to her office for a consultation. And she said, um, your triglycerides are 3,100. They should be below between like two and 300. She said, they're 3,100. Um, you're in massive trouble right now for a heart attack or a stroke or... Um, um, I was, I was, I was bad. And my sugar, when I found out I was a diabetic, the woman went to her other office, sent someone to her other office, which was only three miles out, Dr. Benya, um, and Greg's doctor. Uh, she went down, bought another machine because now you're familiar with what your sugar should be. So your sugar should be anywhere from 80 to 120. Take a guess what my sugar was. Well, I know. What was it? It was over 600, I know that. 690. We've had this conversation many times. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, so they take me to the hospital. They want me to admit me. They're like, you know, um, and to make a long story short, I went immediately on multiple shots of insulin a day, um, metformin, um, Jardians. <laughs> like they just, my sugar was like, you're going to die high. You know, when you, when someone's sugar goes 400, you put them in the hospital. Mine was 690. So that was drinking the sugar, 39 gram Gatorades, like seven of them, eight of them a day. I would just knock them down. I didn't realize how dangerous they were. Um, I went on your diet on February 7th of 2019. I went from 285 pounds to 228 pounds in under five months. I did train, I, I worked at it. Um, I am now insulin free. Um, my sugar, I check daily is, you know, on a bad day, 180, on a good day, 100. You know, probably average around 110, 120. And that's pretty much a very small dosage of metformin still, pretty much on my own now. And so that's because she- where I get off of that metformin? Yeah, well, my, that's my job. My doctor thinks you shouldn't just come straight off it like that. No, no, I've never said that. I've helped many, 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 many people get off of it. And I've watched people live their life and I've watched them come to an end um, and never get off metformin. And I've seen the negative effects of long-term use 
I've met for me. So mm -hmm. you're my friend. We work together. We do things. And so I think it'd be fun. Let's create a new goal. It doesn't always have to be about dropping body fat. No, no, man. I'm, I'm anything that, that aids in my health. I'm, I'm game. Okay. So there's a whole bunch that we could talk about about your story. But one of the goals that I have in mind today is I would like to give people renewed help. Because as we're dealing with this coronavirus, a lot of people are spending a, a ton of time at home. And I, I don't know if I shared this with you, but there was a TMZ article where uh, it was tied into like a, like a real, like, like a, almost like a study where there's like the Corona or the Corona 15 that's taking place. So a lot of people aren't taking advantage of being able to prep their meals and, and eat in a certain way. One, they don't know how to do it. And we're going to talk about it. But people are eating a lot of processed foods, and I'm not demonizing these processed foods, of course, but they're buying, you know, all kind of stuff, and they're sitting around, and they're not walking. And it's funny, because I was thinking about this, Daniel, and I love your thoughts on this. Like, imagine, like, the people in New York who are walking all the time. People are constantly walking. And if we were to look at how many steps they take a day, let's say it's 7,000 steps a day. Now they're down to 500. So you're eating more, you're not moving as much, then the gyms close up. I mean, if you had a gym, Daniel, right now, like 20, I was driving this morning looking at all of the businesses that are closed, 24 hours closed, this gym's closed. It's even illegal for me to have my gym open for people to come in and work out. So man, so you know what I mean? So let's give people some hope on what they can do to take control of their waistline, as well as those who are diabetic, give them hope on how they can begin the process of, re of reversing. Or after we give them all the hope, tell them to come see the gym, baby. <laughs> you know, that's a total throwback gym right there. It's like <laughs> with some, uh, no, it looks good. It's, it's, a, it's a fun gym. It reminds me of uh, high school when I went into your gym. It is like a high school. Yeah, it feels good. But, it, it, but it, you know what? It has everything you would ever need to get a good workout. A bike, a treadmill, free weights, machines, and kettlebells. I don't know what more you need. You just got to get to it. You know what I mean? Well, thank you, baby. It's funny. Like, I had a gentleman by the name of Tom Shimko. Tom first discovered me watching my first infomercial. And this guy had never been someone who worked out. And I hope you're watching, Tom. And uh, Tom, meet Daniel. Daniel, meet Tom. But Tom, in his 50s, I believe he was in his 50s at the time. And if I'm wrong, he'll let everybody know. But Tom, never, like, really an athlete. Um, one of those guys, he saw the information. He's like, man, how can you eat all of that and lose weight? Guess how much weight Tom lost following the, the same method you did in his first Four months. Take a wild guess. I'm going to say if I lost 50, he lost in four months, he lost 20, 80 pounds. Wow, that's a good guess, Daniel. He lost 100 pounds. Wow. And it's funny when he tells the story because he woke up that morning and he was down 98 pounds, right? So, <laughs> so he's like, how, I mean, I got to make this happen. So he went to the gym. And to stay there until those last two were gone, so he could say, I dropped 100 pounds in four months. God bless him. Yeah, he went on to lose a total of 175 pounds. How heavy was he to start? Tom was 300 something. I'm not, I don't know the number, you know, off heart, but you know what I mean? <laughs> but, but let's talk about what that looks like, because the same way someone who's not diabetic and someone who's diabetic they would eat the same. And I don't, know if I, I don't know if I've ever shared this with you, Daniel, but when I created this methodology, I created it primarily thinking about diabetics. And this goes back to 1995 because well, there was a trend back then. The, um, the people that are watching, the people that want to, want to educate themselves have to look at um, things in life that have a higher success rate than things that don't. It's like how we analyze the rehab business when 
Greg and I were, were putting people in rehab. A 30-day rehab stay only allows 3% or less of those people to stay sober for one year. That's a model built on failure. Well, the same thing will be said of most diets. How many, if there was a diet out there that you could go on that, you know, 90% of you, some high, high number would have a success rate. And the reason why is because this really isn't a diet. It's just a scrambling of the, of the, uh, the cards, if you will. It's a reshuffling of the deck. There's not, it's not keto. It's not take this out. It's not add this to it. It's not strictly vegetables. It's, not, it's learning how to properly eat in the right portion and combinations to set yourself up for what's called a fat burning meal. It's really simple. And you can eat like a horse. I, I'm not starving myself. Wait, well, you know what makes it so difficult for people to do it? Um, I think that any time someone is being re reaching out for diet, um, they're probably pretty beat up. You know, diets are hard. Diets are, are uh, um, they never have, they never have legs. They're not, they don't have long-term success. They have immediate going to the wedding. You know, I'm going to so-and-so's wedding. I'm going to my reunion. Anyone can suck it up for three months and lose 20 pounds. Right. They're event driven. <clears throat> exactly. Absolutely. Um, I, I think, um, what we're talking about here is total wellness. I mean, your skin looks better. Your hair looks better. I mean, everything about me got better. I felt so much better. I slept so much better. I mean, it was great. Really great. But, uh, so, and you actually, you, you said something that's so powerful. Um, and that is that people feel beat up because they do. I they mean, do. I grew up watching my mom lose a hundred pounds and we all cheered. And then I watched her gain it back and I saw her be sad. And I, then after a while of doing that yo-yo, it got to the point where my mom would say, you know, I'm getting ready to lose this weight. Or they would see her eating differently. And people in the family, people in the family would look and go, okay, what are you going to do now? And it was almost like they're setting you up for the feet. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's one of the yeah. things I always tell people, there's a three-legged stool. It's like, Yes, nutrition is important and we want to learn and, and be able to apply that. Yes, being active and fitness is important and we want to become, you know, move, et cetera. But then there's the mindset. And you and I always talk about that. It's like the mindset, you know, oftentimes people aren't putting enough energy into that part of it. And so their why in the beginning or their lack of why gets them going and they're somewhat motivated, but the motivation fades because they never tapped into the mindset and there's a gentleman who his wife is becoming a dietary life coach will what's up will i think will's watching or he'll catch the replay but will you know he's an athlete and i met him at this convention you know maybe a year and a half two years ago and i saw the light come on man he was like i'm gonna do this and i mean this guy is, looks like a totally different guy you know your face goes from this wide to like this Right? <laughs> like, how big was your yeah. head that's your heaviest weight? I mean, because your head's kind of big now, but. <laughs> I got big. <laughs> got that's big dome, man. you're a celebrity. That's, that's why you have a big head. Yeah. Oh, yeah? The celebrities have big heads? Ah, you never know. I mean, look at Prince, man. When Prince was alive, you see how big his head was? He had a big boo foo do. I mean, look at Kim Basinger, your, your former sister in law. That's a big head. Big head, Kim. <laughs> Yeah, you could you could tease that up a little bit. Join the big heads. I'm working on it, man. I'm working on it. Where's your, where's your, you you call me like where you come out puff daddy. It. Every once in a while, I, you know, I do that. I let the girls do my hair. I like today. That. You know, after they did my nails, the girls do my, my hair. The girls doing my hair tonight. Oh, nice. See, I got the white beard right now, so I'm gonna have to start coloring this and get a little longer. Well, I like that. I'm gonna take, no, I'm not going Santa Claus, man. I'm not the Gordon Fisher, man. You know what I mean? I'm not doing it. Well, so Daniel, I want you to become coach for a second. And uh, for those of you right. who are like here live with us, if you have questions, I want you, oh, Will just uh, piped in in the chat. And Will says, I lost almost 100 pounds, man. So Will says, what's up, Daniel? That, that is well. awesome. I mean, I'm, I'm very proud of you, Will. I'm very excited that your wife's a diet for life coach now. So, you know, they're taking it and, and about to just really help even more people. You know what I mean? Like taking everything to the next level. 
But those of you, if you have questions for Daniel, for myself about the topic, go ahead and post and we definitely will uh, make time to, to answer those questions. But right now, Daniel, be coach. How do you talk to someone who you know they, they've battled? And I know you've done this and I've seen you do it a lot with your work in uh, helping people recover. But talk to these people right now who are on the fence. They know they, they want to lose weight. They want to feel better. They want to look better. Give them some words of encouragement. The thing I, I would say, yeah, the thing that I would say is you don't have to live the way you're living. You know, I mean, I, I, uh, I think there's, a, for me now, and I don't know if anyone out there who's watching is going to share this, but um, I'm gun I, I call them I'm gunners. You know, I get out of the shower, I catch myself in the mirror, and I go, God, my stomach looks really big now. Yeah, I'm going to do something about that, man. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to go to the gym. I'm, I'm going to stop eating ice cream at ten o'clock at night. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. I actually can do this. It's really not that hard. I mean, it's not. It's not like other diets. I've done, I've done, you know, um, you know, Weight Watchers. I did. Uh, you know, I was going for a long term. Uh, I thought the food was terrible. Um, I, I did. Uh, you know, just I went vegan, vegetarian for a while. I lost a lot of weight. Um, but I wanted to eat meat and I wanted to eat other things. And I liked, you know, um, things that had uh, um, cow products in it, like coffee creamer, you know, and I had to give all that up to be vegan. Um, this, I didn't have to really change anything that I was doing. I just had to, you know, I'm trying to liken it to something. Um, it, it, it is like a, like a, um, a computer or, or when cell phones, I'm, I'm 59, I'll be 60 this year. Um, and uh, there were no cell phones when I was a kid. My kids all walk around with a phone now. And those kids are better with that cell phone than me. Because I don't understand it, um, and because I can't quite catch on as fast as them, should I just stop using the cell phone? Well, no. It's part of our life. We use the cell phones as adults, too, and so on. And we had to learn. Well, I'm saying it that way because you know you want to do something and you'd like to do something to help you live longer and help you be more comfortable and happier and feel good. I mean, my ex, you know, uh, was in really good shape. And I look at myself, I go, when she looks at me like that, I wonder if she goes, God, he's really fat right now. You know, like I'd, I'd say that to myself. I'd mess right. with my own head about it because I didn't feel good about myself. But this is everything that you need to do. It's in your kitchen right now. And it's not like you got to change a lot. You just have to learn how to use the phone. I have to learn how to use a laptop. You have to learn how do you have to eat right in this certain very non-complicated way. And you'll see weight just start coming off of you. I mean, and honestly, it's not a diet, really. It's um That's why it wasn't what's, what's, really, what's the name? Holla, <laughs> diet free life. Yeah, I mean it, it is. Everything I could make a fat burning meal right now, what's in my refrigerator for a snack or for dinner or whatever. You know, tonight um, I made a bone broth, which I make, you know, big giant with huge bones that all the way 36 hours to all the marrows out. And then I drain everything off and I just freeze the broth. And then I create fat burning meals with the broth. So I'm going to cook a Delmonico steak and shave it really, really thin. I'm going to add it to the broth. I'm going to add um, uh, rice to the broth. And then I'm going to add okra. A big thing of fried okra that I did with onions, and I've got slow carb, fast carb, the broth, and the protein. Nice. Actually, that'd be fun. So, all right, because some questions are coming in. Someone said they like, you know, how I call Kim Big Head Kim. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm going to share with you uh, two of my favorite fat burning meals. So, I'm going to share one, and then you share one. And these will give people some ideas on how they can actually, you know, kind of a little bit of how it works, right? So, the other day, you know, sitting inside, can't go anywhere. I was like, man, I'm hungry. So I realized, you know, I'm one of those guys, not like you. I didn't go and buy a whole bunch of food so I don't have to ever leave. I just walk over to the grocery store and get what I need and kind of make it work. I mean, I probably get like three days, but this is what I had the other day. I opened up the fridge and there was nothing in, well, a few things. And so I go into the freezer and there's some, some Amy's mac and cheese. So, you know, hey, I like some mac and cheese. That's important to me. So mac and cheese is a fast car. So I pull it out, and it's microwavable, so I'm going to throw it in the mic. So then I'm looking, and I see sausage patties by Morningstar. You ever eat those? You ever eat a sausage patty, Daniel? 
Never. Occasionally. Okay. Not often. So I'm just telling you, this is what happened. So I was like, okay. I hear you. I hear you. So I was like, all right. And then there were some strawberries. I knew were going to go bad. Like, you know how they go bad? And, and the kids weren't here, and they snack on them all the time. So I was like, okay, that's my slow car. So I took out the sausage patties. I got three sausage patties. And that's my protein. I threw the mac, the mac and cheese in the microwave. Five minutes later, I got my fast carb mac and cheese. And then I sprinkled some strawberries on the plate, which is my slow carb. Boom. That's a bachelor, get it done, have some fun, fat burning meal. <laughs> give, so give, give me an example of your words. fat burning meals. I got five words for you. I'm glad it's my turn. So. Well, let's go, Daniel. So I will tell you that my favorite go-to fat-burning meal was um, sautéed rice with onions, mm. a nice, beautiful piece of grilled salmon, oh. and broccoli and broccoli or spinach. So I kept it simple. That's all that was on my plate. Um, I could use uh, a condiment of some kind, which sometimes I'd make like a garlic butter and put it over my, uh, well, I'd be lying to say I only put it on the salmon. I might sprinkle that stuff on the, on the broccoli too. Um, <laughs> but I had a, a nice, light, uh, I had a little water to the garlic butter to make it go a little longer. And, uh, and I put that on my meal and I, I would knock that a salmon, rice, broccoli dinner back, you know, at least two times, at least twice a week I had that meal. Or I would rotate in. Um, and I, and I, I'd spice up the rice or I'd do something different. You know, uh, I, I kept the portion of my fast carb to a minimal size and I upped my protein size and my slow carb was usually larger than my fast carb too. Uh, Cause it gave me longevity with the carb. Right. Um, for, for me, the enemy, the, the common mistake that most Americans make, which is why we're such an obese country is they don't realize how many times they double up or even triple up their fast carb in a single meal, which is absolutely the worst no-no of all you can do um, and, and is guaranteed to, to put weight on you. Right. The, well, that, bread, that bread before you start your meal, that bread's your fast carb if you eat it. You can't, you can't do that and then do, you know, rice roni with mac and cheese and stuff. You know, I mean, that's crazy. Well, uh, and it counts if you get – go ahead. No, I was just going to say Tom jumped in there and just wanted to let you know that his weight was 390 when he started. So the one I told you about who lost 100 pounds in the first four months. I saw him. Yeah. So, and, and, and let me say out loud, man, the best salmon I've ever had, Daniel, was that salmon you made. You liked mine. Dude. Yeah, you liked mine. I mean, I'm, I think about Crisp it. on the outside, oh, tender on the outside. All right, so my favorite meal. My personal favorite meal. So I gave them my first example was how I created okay. one out of almost nothing. Salmon, mm -hmm. love salmon. I mean, trout's right there fighting a little bit. I do like mac and cheese, but when there's not mac and cheese, I love white rice. Um, very rarely do I eat brown, uh, but both are fine. You know, while I'll eat it, I just prefer white. And um, I like asparagus right now. I'm digging some asparagus or collard greens, and that's my slow card. Mm -hmm. So there you go. So now what you shared was your favorite meal. Give me, give me an example of, an, a, like, you, you shared your favorite meal, right? Right. Fat burning meal. So give me an, a, a fat burning meal that probably isn't your favorite, but is one that you put together in a situation. Or maybe when you're with your sister, Beth, you explain to her how to make a fat burning meal. Well, you know, I like, I like also, as you can tell by the soup that I'm having tonight, um, I like a lot of times to put it into one bowl, which is a very Asian way to do it. You know, the Asians will have pasta or rice with, you know, the fast carb uh, as the pasta or the rice and the slow carb or the vegetables they put in. And then they'll put some type of source of protein in one meal. I like to do that too. So, um, I would have to say from the spaghetti sauce that I make is a very complicated sauce. I make it, you know, gallons at a time and freeze it. So the kid, it's very fast. The kids will take my sauce and eat it as a soup. So I'll have um, veal, I'll have uh, pork, and I'll have beef in, cooked into the sauce. 
Then I take three or four different slow carbs, broccoli, spinach, uh, okra, and something else, another vegetable. And I disintegrate them after I bake them into a liquid in my Vitamix. I add a little bit of the sauce that I've already made to it and turn it into water and I dump it right into the sauce. All those vitamins and all those vegetables are right in that sauce and they don't know it. And I'm talking, you know, I'll make three gallons of this sauce and I'll put four pieces of broccoli this big in it. Four bags of, of spinach. Somebody wants me. <laughs> hey, uh, real quick. Uh, I don't even know how to make that go. That's all right. I'll, I'll help you out when we're done. You know. <laughs> all right. So Lisa Notch says, what's up? What's up, Lisa? She says, oh my gosh, exactly what Daniel just said. We get hungry and, and carbs are what is craved. I struggle uh, to get protein and veggies in. Uh, not big on meat, and she loves her carbs. So I there feel you go. You, man. Hey, carbs are good, but you can eat your carbs yeah, just, and and get results. Yeah, it's just a matter Absolutely of stuff, of learning the methodology. Come on. Um, yeah, I mean, when it comes when it comes to like with your blood sugar, uh, Jerry has a question for you, Daniel. Uh, he said he has a hard sure. time remembering to um, check his blood sugar. And he definitely doesn't yeah. see himself doing it throughout the day. Any tips? Yeah, I'm gonna show you right now. Very simple. So uh, are we getting immediate responses? Oh, getting yeah, everything is immediate. He just wants to know like- so we immediate response if I ask him a question, will he type it right back to you? If he's still there, I mean, I, I mean- You got a cell phone? I have, I have no idea. <laughs> so the I mean, this moves a little fast, Daniel. This is, you know- Hang on, old man. 2020, man. Hold on, old man. Technology, bro. I'm on the technology right now. I'm There's a thing called Facebook. You should, you know, check it out. <laughs> I'm sorry, I solved this dilemma for somebody who said the same thing about taking their, this, this person wasn't taking their, um, um, their medication. I keep forgetting to take my medication. Okay. Uh -huh. So you, you, now listen carefully, please pay attention. So there's Beth saying hi to Robert. Hi, hi. Beth. Beth, you're on our show right now, so I want to ask you a question. What? How did I teach you recently? Talk loud. How did I teach you recently to remember your medication and to check your sugar? To check my sugar? Yeah, what do you do with your phone? Oh, I do it with my meter. No. How do you know when to, when to what, with your phone now, what did you set in your phone? Yes. And the alarm goes off at the two times of the day I have to check my sugar. So it's the Daniel alarm, which I already have enough of Daniel. Mm. Now I got more of Daniel. So I Thank you, Aunt Beth. Okay. So my sister has the thing you put it in your arm and she was going, but it doesn't make, it doesn't matter because I have two specific times. And I said, okay, Beth, now you were talking about not being able to, master technology i said go into your phone go into the alarm set the alarm and then say that you want it there every day so every day beth's phone goes off now at 12 and i'll be talking to her and it'll, it'll alarm go, gotta check my sugar i'll call you back and she never misses it now nice same hey, for you there's your tip, set bro. the alarm on your phone for the time you want to check your sugar and, and believe me it works it works okay so good tip uh veronica Veronica Hall has a question. She says, uh, how do we learn slow carbs and fast carbs? Well, um, we have a methodology, uh, Veronica, and it's called Diet Free Life. And so the goal is to get you to, to learn it. So very, very, very soon, uh, we are going to be launching an online Diet Free Life membership, like a, a program. So you'll be able to go in and learn everything, step by step. It's, it's pretty awesome. Um, and then Daniel is, is working with me on that. And we're also going to create something specifically for people who are type two diabetic or pre diabetic. Um, and we're going to do something else, um, that, that I know of, I've never seen it done yet. And that is, you know, we're talking Robert and I about, I was a chef before I became an actor. And so, uh, I quite enjoy being, I post a lot of things. If you follow me on Facebook about stuff I do in the kitchen, cause it's relaxing. It's fun for me. Well, we may do 
diet free life meals live come into my kitchen and i'm going to i'll register you know the, the day before or two days before what the menu is going to be and then we're going to cook it and eat it together live on the air i'm excited right. about that one. Now, who was who was that uh, they almost came into the shot that's hey. my <laughs> hey don't hey. forget follow me on tiktok okay what is it um it should be Robert Ferguson official. Okay. Okay. And then I there's four Ruth people following me right now. I'll go up to number five. I'm gonna have there's five Ruth. followers. I have 187. There's Rufus. You I catching have a long Rufus? Way to go, people. I have a long way to go. You catching Rufus? Yes. Okay. Any questions you got? You catch so the goal here. You catching Jethro. So the goal of this call <laughs> was supposed to be: How can you reverse type two diabetes? and what we mean by real weight loss. So in our last 20 minutes that we have, if you guys have specific questions, we'll go into great detail about it. But what we're saying is that you don't have to live a life deprived or restricted when it comes to food. There is a method of learning how to eat regular everyday food and get these results. And when I say real weight loss, Daniel, what I mean, and I, and I know you and I, we talk about this all the time, but real weight loss to me, is grasa que no regresa. It's fat that does not come back. It's having a lifestyle where you continue to eat the way you ate as you drop the weight. Therefore, if you never gave up anything or ever felt restricted or deprived, why would you ever gain the weight back? That's what I mean by real, real weight loss. And it changes because your gut health changes, our metabolism changes, our lean muscle mass to fat ratio changes. And so because of that, the way you lose the weight or keep the weight off now, that's going to change in the next, you know, year, two, three, four, or five years. Yeah. And I oftentimes agree. people don't even think about that. And that's important. You know, I'm a, um, I'm a pretty good golfer. I've always been a pretty good golfer. I was really good in my 20s. And early if you were a bad golfer, would you say, uh, I kind of suck at golf? Um, yeah, I would say I'm not very good. I know you would. Um, I can take the average golfer probably shoots in the high nineties and in one afternoon on a driving range and playing 18 holes of golf, I can knock 10 shots up at anybody's game that plays that high 10 shots. Imagine a guy shoots 98 and take them down to below, below 90 into the eighties. It's only for one reason because I can look and I can watch someone and I can tell them very basic fundamental things that they're not doing properly in striking golf ball. And I'll be able to pick up those mistakes. This is exactly the same as what we're talking about here. I knew how to eat. I knew what a carb was. I knew what a calorie was. I, knew what, I didn't understand that you can fine tune, very simple tuning, and how to create a fat burning meal. People have to learn what a fat burning meal is. There is a combination of things that you put in your car, oil, engine, gas, it makes it run, and some things you do the maintenance of that makes it run more efficiently. It's exactly the same thing. Make no mistake about it. I'm responsible for my vessel. I'm the one that shot up to 285 pounds and I'm the one that lived being heavy up and down, you know, depending upon what role I had to do in a movie for many, many years. And I abused myself because I did not take the time to want to be a better golfer. I didn't take the time to learn. And when I found your method, I got to admit, when you first explained it to me and then I got your book, I, really, I read the whole thing. And I looked at it and I thought, it can't be that simple. <laughs> I did think that. I was like, I go, because why, why isn't, and then I, if you remember correctly, Robert, it was February 7th. I don't think I got the book until you sent it right out. But I don't think I got it. We had our first discussion about it. Um, until like the middle of February. So really, I, I had the principles of it from another pass at it that I took, but I didn't really study it. Um, I want to say I lost a pound a day or three quarters of a pound a day for like 40 days. I mean, like I just, the, the initial weight just rolled off of me. And I wasn't doing anything. I, I, I tore my shoulder like the first, at the end of the first week of doing this, I tore my shoulder up and still have not had the surgery. So I did all of the training and everything I did 
with a level four tear in my left shoulder, in my uh, the back of my shoulder. What is that thing called again? Rotator cuff, yeah. Um, so that's still there. I mean, I had to do it. I'm not a big cardiovascular guy. I'd rather use weights to do cardio, lighter weights and throw them up fast and do fast sets, station to station. And I ripped through that little gym. Don't be deceived. That's, that's a small gym, but there's about 30 different things you can do in there. Right. And so I, uh, I, I really enjoyed that. I couldn't do it, hardly anything, anything away from my body, my chest, over my head. I couldn't even lift my arm for two months. Uh, it was hard. It was hard. But I... I knew I wasn't doing enough working out to be attributed to it. The most significant thing that I changed was how I ate. Not so much what I Remember, listen to this carefully. Not what I ate, but how I ate. Right. That's the difference. I, yeah. did, I, I can't think of a single thing, really, that I, including ice cream. Now, I had ice cream. I treated myself every once in a while. I did. I'll admit it. As a diabetic, I'm not supposed to eat ice cream. As uh, someone trying to lose weight, ice cream is not your friend. Uh, you know what? But I did. I had once a week. I took a little bowl, two scoops, went out with the kids. You know, I could afford to do it. I was killing it. I was killing it. Well, I mean, the the methodology shows people how to eat ice cream. No foods are off limits. Yeah. No, there's nothing off the list, but there are foods that are beneficial more so than others. There are. Well, it all depends on the person. Right. All, right. Well, all the science, all the science, everybody's different, man. There's some people who can eat spinach and their body metabolizes it no problem and is healthy. And there's other people that don't have the same microbiome, right? They don't have the same gut health and spinach doesn't work for them. So that's why I always tell people, I go, like, all of that is constantly changing. Like, your body's constantly changing. The person you are today is not the same person you'll be. The method will stay in touch, but at the end of the day, everyone must learn their body, Right. And, and I'm sharing that for the people. So uh, Allison Cosman has a question. She says, I've got to learn. <laughs> like that. That's great. That's how you come out the gate, right? So <laughs> strong, Allison. That's coming out the gate. I got to learn. She said, I have noticed uh, I have fibromyalgia. And when I consume a lot of carbs, um, my pain levels go up. So to me, that's an example of listening to your body. But at the same time, learn, because she may be over-consuming that one macronutrient, carbohydrates. Another person said, well, how many carbs can you eat throughout the day? And then Michelle, what's up, Michelle, talks about dropping 30 pounds. Look, everybody's unique and everybody's different. Everybody's unique and everyone's different. We have a unique fingerprint. We have a unique metabolism. And when I say metabolism, that's like so broad because at the end of the day, you have carbohydrate metabolism, you have protein metabolism, you have fat metabolism. It's just, it, it can get really detailed. What we're hoping to do today is give you guys an idea that all things are possible, but a lot of it comes down to knowledge um, and education. So Daniel, you know, real quick before I, because there's a couple questions I want to ask you from the people. And if you guys have more questions, shoot them. Uh, for Daniel or myself, and I'll ask, but we had some good news this morning, some really good news, and I shared this with you, but I'm just going to say it again because I think it opens up a lot of doors for us to do the work that you and I want to do uh, and with our other coaches and, and the impact we want to make as, as, a, as the company stay healthy, and that is a major health insurance company, and six states approved us as a methodology that will be made available to their constituents, their members. That is no easy task. I did it once before and it took forever, man. And this one, it took forever. And to wake up this morning and get that email with a signed contract and everything's ready to go. I mean, I could have cried, man. I really could have. You know, what's exciting most for me, Robert, is that you have always understood the same thing that I have tried to practice in my life. And that is, you know, the Lord never said that he didn't want us all to prosper and, and make a good living or do well. And, and I know, you know, we're, we live day to day, you and I, we're not, you know, gazillionaires, but, but one thing that we have in our war chest that we take to heaven with us is how many people you've helped. I mean, the number of people, I want you to understand what, when I look at you, handsome, and you're in good shape, and a former fighter and trainer and all this stuff, and you got older and you didn't put a lot of weight on, 
like a lot of former athletes do. But there's a lot of women out there that have given birth to multiple kids that have that extra weight on. There's a lot of former athletic guys like myself or actors who aren't as athletic as they were before. And, you know, they, they've puffed up and they put the weight on it and they gave up. And you gave me hope, you know, for doing this. And, and so, you know, whenever you can help other human beings, whenever you can help other human beings and be of service like you are, God knows that. He knows that you're doing that. You're going to help a lot of people with this. When you get this going online and everything, you're going to change diabetics' lives. I mean, I was sticking that needle in me twice a day, you know, for, for, for a while. And, and then I thought, to my, and, and I felt so sick that I had to inject something. I'd, I'd actually shut down a system of my body from, from systematic abuse that I had done over the years. I mean, I obviously didn't look at it, you know, when I was eating terribly for 30, 40 years and say, oh, I'm going to end up having to be a diabetic and shoot myself with insulin every day. But I never thought I was going to end up not doing it. I thought my pancreas had just stopped working. And you know what? Not true. I reversed, I reversed it with your program. I did. Well, thank you, man. I, I mean, I think, or I feel that's one of the things that bring us together is that I mean, we, can, we can have fun and play and give each other a hard time. And one, yeah. day, and one day get on the mat. <laughs> But you keep talking about that? It's going down, people. You're going down. You should have just wrestled me. Well, you need to just, uh, you know, go and look at some of those names that I put in front of you that, that I've rolled with. Yeah, yeah same as me. <laughs> NCAA champions, Olympic. All right, uh, hey, well, maybe we'll take. Olympic you. gold medalists. Let's so you're telling, me, you're telling me you got on the mat and wrestled Olympic gold medalists? Absolutely. Who? Kenny Monday. Come on. And Kenny thrashed you. Uh, I wouldn't say he thrashed me. but You can't was, be Kenny Monday. Hey, no, no, I'm not Kenny saying. Kenny Monday was the BMF. He was a bad mother. Oh, dude, bad. Oklahoma. Bad. Hey, unbelievable. Scary bad how good he was. So I've been, I mean, hey, it's a different thing right. when you roll right. with someone like so, that. So what all I was trying to explain to my younger, <laughs> friend, my, my youthful, uh, 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 overindulgent friend was, Oh, There's man. a reason why they say now on the mat at 165 pounds, now on the mat at 175 pounds, now on the mat at 190 pounds. And then you started to ask, you better ask somebody when you say now on the mat at 240 pounds when you weigh 190. So <laughs> you, could be, you could be really good, but you're wrestling a guy I who weighs. I weigh 190. Or what do you weigh? Uh, right now, I'm, I'm probably 10 pounds over my regular weight, so I'm like 185. Okay, That's so you're 185, close. and I'm 10 pounds heavier than I was when I finished well, diet. When I drop down 10 pounds, I'm a, I'm a tougher animal, man, so, so get ready. Well, I don't believe you're going to be able to handle the two <laughs> on, the, on the mat. Now, if we go Greco or something, you're gonna, but if you go under me, you're going you're gonna to be in trouble. Okay, well, we'll, we'll see how that goes. And, yeah, and yeah. for those of you who are – it's like they're in when's the, the last time. When's the last time you were on a mat? Um, on the mat wrestling. Be honest. Probably two years ago. Okay, so two years. Yeah, that's not. I mean, that's horrible. So about two I years go, ago. I go. I go once a year to one of the high schools. Yeah, but this year I'm I'm going back. I'm gonna go wrestle with the kids. Yeah, that's what I do. So I go so in. I walk in with my stuff on. I don't say anything. So that's and yeah, I go so in. I'll come out there. You know, to New York. You know, where there's some bad wrestlers in Syracuse, where you're at, man, there's some good wrestlers. So I give it to you. Yeah, there's some bad boys. Don't fear, baby. So you guys, this is this is how Daniel and I do a business meeting. It's all about <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's, it's about fun. it's about it's about uh, you know competing. It's about chicks. I gotta listen to all Robert's millions of girlfriends. Hey, I'm man, just, I'm just a lonely <laughs> farmer, man. <laughs> The lonely farmer. I got me and my me and my big dog. Oh, Say hi, big boy. That is boy. not true. That is not true. What he's saying. Easy, Rico. <laughs> <laughs> Easy, Rico. Or pull it back. Pull it back. <laughs> <laughs> I am very focused on work and my two daughters. So you have such beautiful daughters, and you do too. That's why we we need to do something together. They all need to spend some time. I, I told you, we'd be shooting shows every day. You needed to bring those girls out here. We would have coroned it for three months. <laughs> <laughs> Killed it live feed every day. Oh, my goodness. Finley, Finley's going, tell them to come here. 
Uh oh, so people are saying cage match. All right, yeah. Actually, we'll, we'll do a tag team. We'll we'll put it on somebody. And my buddy Ivalo, where is Ivalo? Why we get? Why we get? Why don't we get two two uh, audience members? We'll do a, a contest. We'll have two audience members have to come tag you. You and I'll be a tag team. Oh, they gotta take nice. the time. All right. Well, I'm I'm uh, challenging Ivalo, my buddy. He's uh, he's he's awesome. So, you follow your challenge. So, go get somebody. Me and Daniel will put it on you. So, he's in Vegas. So, when we go to Vegas next time, we'll go wrestle with those guys. Okay. Is he a wrestler? No. Nah, he's a boxing promoter, but he's very uh, skilled at it. <coughs> okay, good. Maybe so. can, we can promote our event. Oh, yeah. That's right. Now, I got to tell you something we're doing. All right. So, we have five minutes. Go ahead. All right. So... I started looking at what's going on with the NBA and everything's canceled. And, you know, we're in, a, I'm in a town in Syracuse, New York, where, you know, they, they eat, sleep and breathe Syracuse university basketball and football. That's, the, that's what they live. There's no pro teams. You got to go all the way up to Buffalo or down to New York city for the giants and the jets and that kind of thing. So really what, what goes by Syracuse is what, is what happens here athletically. Now that the tournament got canceled and everything else, and they're taking basketball hoops down in public parks so the kids don't go play basketball because they can't socially distance themselves. So I'm like, you know what, man? So I went online and I ordered six full on zip up hazmat suits with the heads over them. And I've got the super ultra sheer um, uh, black gloves and the masks. And I'm going to play the hazmat celebrity invitational basketball tournament and full hazmat gear. Look for it, baby. I'm going to Facebook Live it. We're going to play the Hazmat Invitational. And I'm going to call it, instead of March Madness, I'm going to call it Harsh Madness right here. Now, the first time you told me, of course, I was like, oh, that was that's pretty good. And the second time you told me that, so that was the third time, so my response wasn't the same. Your response was terrible. It didn't <laughs> I know. Have, it had nothing to endorse. <laughs> Ready? Hey, yes, baby. Has yes, baby. That's great. Go ahead. Uh, someone asked a question, are those Mastiffs behind you? Those are English Mastiffs, yes. Okay, so they heard it. English Mastiffs. So in our last three minutes, anyone have a question? Question about anything. You know, Daniel is single, by the way. <laughs> My money's on Robert, I'm in. From, from Will. <laughs> oh, thank you, Will. You got my back. See, nice Daniel? job, Will. Nice job, Will. I'm going to block you now. <laughs> <laughs> if you even come at me with that stance, I'm going to laugh. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> round and the same song. Come on. Been all around the world. Hey, so I, I challenge you to do a TikTok with your daughters, and I'm going to do two uh, before the week is up. So all right, I'm going to open up. I'm going to open up a TikTok account tonight. And I'm going to do a TikTok with the girls. Now, does right. it always have to be that dance stuff you're doing? Yes, it does. It always has to be a dance for TikTok? Yeah, it. that's what makes it crazy. Trust me, I tr I've been trying to do, they said I can't do it the way I want to do it. How old your daughters and you? Uh, well, Faith turns um, 10 on uh, April 5th. So we gotta, wow. we're going to have a Corona birthday. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is what it is. What are you gonna do? You just and, and then Felicity's 12 and a half. What about you, Big Jet? You wanna be in the video? So, yeah. Well, there you go, guys. Hey, our goal is to come back on a regular basis. So Daniel and I, uh, we'll invite uh, Barb to, to come in. She's missing us now, Daniel. She's like, hey, man. Barb's what, missing us? Well, she's like, hey, I mean, everything's hey, let's down. Get, uh, uh, I'm gonna reach out. So let's talk about that really quick. Um, so what's today? Today is Monday. So why don't we try for like a Thursday or a Friday, we come back. I'm gonna see if I can get uh, Alec to come on with us. Nice. Yeah. And can I interview him and, and, ask, and ask him questions about you? You can, he's a pretty funny guy. He'll, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure he'll doctor that right up to service. You're all of your watchers. All right, well, that sounds good. Hey, thank you. Thanks everybody for being here. Share it, like us, be with us. Uh, our goal is to, to come to your home, man, and have some fun. We're doing it, man. We're doing it. We're going we're we're to light this up now. Thank you, Daniel, man. I appreciate you, man. God bless you, brother. You know I love you. I do.
I love you too. Bye.